So uh, many of you might be able to um, identify what is shown in this picture. Okay. So this is a uh, cockpit view of an airport. So this is not the actual cockpit, uh, but uh, this is a, a simulated uh, cockpit. So you can actually simulate the uh, airport situation, runway and everything. So probably uh, many of us uh, might have already read the today's newspaper regarding the uh, Director General of Civil Aviation has issued a warning to Spicejet Airlines telling them that uh, their uh, training is uh, not okay. Because there were uh, two flights uh, diverted and landed uh, yesterday uh, from Spicejet company and uh, last week uh, there was a problem of uh, a smoke and all that inside the aircraft. Okay, so the DGC has identified that uh, the simulator which was used for uh, Spicejet pilots are uh, having problems, and uh, around the, they de-rostered 60 of the pilots uh, within the last uh, six months, citing that the training in simulators were inadequate. So, hope uh, you might be able to understand what exactly is uh, simulation. Okay. So, why this is uh, simulation is required because there are certain situations where life and death is a imminent but very remote possibility, but it is extremely important. When these situations of life and death comes, how to give training to handle this life and death situation is uh, more important. And you may not be able to replicate the real scenarios uh, in this life and death situation. So there comes the importance of simulation, means similar environment you create where uh, life and death becomes uh, very important. So years back, uh, there was a uh, trial in uh, Los Angeles airport where the most of uh, the participants might have traveled in air uh, by flight before. You are taking the boarding pass. People were waiting uh, to enter the flight. And just before uh, starting the boarding, there was an announcement that the, we are very sorry to inform you that uh, we have uh, two pilots available and both of them are actually uh, having uh, adequate uh, trainee experience but they are not qualified pilots but they are trainees with adequate experience. So. Those who want to continue, they also announce that airlines is confident enough to fly with them. Those who want to continue can continue the flight. Others can, uh, we will refund the entire amount. So it so happened that uh, except one passenger, everybody canceled the, uh, asked for refund. This was actually a, not a real scenario. It was a, they put a mock exercise and the fellow who continued the, opt to continue himself was a pilot. So this shows that how much important the, our, uh, the people give to safety and this is uh, clearly applicable to uh, medicine also. So here we are dealing with the two situations. You need to transfer the knowledge where uh, criticality of life and death comes. At the same time, when you transfer the knowledge at that moment or the, from the next moment itself, the person or the patient who is in front of you is it is his right that he receives the best care. So 
if some we tell that okay next, tomorrow a pg student is going to operate and you no know, patient will be willing okay but at the same time how to make the knowledge transfer in this critical field is also very important otherwise the medicine will become uh, that's why the modern medicine has improved and the ayurveda and other traditional medicine has uh, problems now because the knowledge has not transferred well. no patient want to be your learning so here the importance of uh, simulations now. So the simulation is especially important when we have a mushrooming of medical colleges all over the country with a less complex clinical materials. Let us say 25 years back, the average number of patients and situations at trainee C is vastly different what we see now. So many of these situations, we need a simulated scenario. Second thing is the complexities in the applications of medicine in terms of uh, Equipments and instruments are increased. So the entire uh, idea for simulation medicine basically part of a quality and safety improvement in medical practice. So how we learn and transfer the knowledge is basically through mentor and simulation. Any knowledge, not only the medical field. Mentor is there is a teacher who is uh, teaching you what exactly you have to learn, what are the targets and all that. Simulation is mostly without any teacher. You are creating the real environment and you are learning through the environment. So there are two types of uh, simulation, what we call empirical simulation and computer simulation. Empirical simulation partly we do every day. So tomorrow there is an operation. So we go to the imaging, CT scan and all that. We make a plan of how I am going to do the surgery tomorrow. This is empirical. In computer simulation, what we do is, we actually create the scenario in softwares, do the exercise, let us say we want to do a brain surgery tomorrow, do the exercise in the computer, then implement it, and then you replicate the near similar scenario next day. So this is the computer simulation. If you apply simulation to medicine, there are three levels. So these three levels are approximately corresponding to the medical graduation specialty. Let us say level 1 is MBBS related, level 2 is MD or MS, level 3 is DM, MCH and advanced uh, uh, competencies. So the, all the simulation exercises are not just dealing with machine whatever we want. These are all structured uh, skills to be learned based upon the level of competence and uh, skills the training needs to occur at that point of time. So the level 1 trainings might be different from level 3 uh, training. So there will always be a syllabus for the uh, simulation lab. So to make a syllabus, we have to identify what is the problem in clinical learning. For example, you want to do an endotracheal intubation. So keeping the patient uh, safety and quality in mind, how to avoid the injury to the vocal cords and all, these are the problems you identify in clinical learning. Okay. Then you identify what are the errors in practice by retrospective analysis of these procedures. Again, you want to do endotracheal intubation. You uh, analyze the reported incidence of errors in medical practice in thousand intubations and find out what exactly is the problem uh, people face. So you incorporate those correction of errors in the simulation curriculum. So, almost the entire domains of uh, medical practice can be incorporated into simulation. It can be from physiology of adult, pharmacology, airway management, operations, uh, spinal procedure, radiology, anything we have uh, simulation modules now and there are certain companies who work really in this mode. When you create a simulation uh, lab in your center, you have to identify the domains. For example, this is a central simulation facility model for level 3. Okay. So what exactly uh, happens is you identify the domain, you identify the uh, people involved in that domain and you identify to prepare a curriculum by machines and execute the uh, simulation training. This is what you normally do. So the concept has to be clear from the beginning. So the uh, how the knowledge is transferred uh, to different uh, segment, what the concept uh, back end of the simulation training is in this uh, complex learning algorithm. 
but uh, converting that into a practicality through machines and practical application, what a trainee has to do tomorrow is actually a complex question. So you have a lot of equipments uh, available in the market. Uh, let us say more than 50 to 70 equipments are manufactured, available in the market, ready to buy. So I just uh, introduce uh, some of the machines what you have. This is a what we call a, a laparoscopy simulator. This simulator has uh, some modules for laparoscopic surgery. Okay. You can see something in the middle. These are all uh, those who are uh, involved in laparoscopy know that this is the hand instruments in the laparoscopy. So you move the instruments and the screen you will actually exactly see the operation room environment. You see the gallbladder. You see the abdomen, you can actually have the instruments of uh, coagulation, cutting, scissors, everything is there in that. You can change it in the uh, computer uh, software module. So the instrument will change into scissors to uh, grasp her and all that. So what really happens is, you can perform the surgery here, that is point number one. Second, in advanced machines like this, you can actually uh, create difficulties in this surgery. Let us say you are doing a, a gallbladder removal which we call polycystectomy. There are some eight scenarios of polycystectomy here. So first will be very simple. The last one will be gallbladder itself is not visible. It will be inside the liver. It's a very difficult surgery. So you escalate the scenario depending on what exact skills you want to learn. For example, you are already a uh, VN trainee, you are not interested in the level, uh, very basic uh, laparoscopic polystrectomies. You advance your uh, module into that and perform the uh, polystrectomy in a uh, virtual environment. So these machines also will, you can also see 3D view, you can also see bleeding, you can also, the machine will also alert you when you make unwanted injuries. Machine will also alert you when the patient is, the injuries are so severe that the patient is dead, you will get a message that patient is dead, please do not proceed. It will also give a message that sometimes that laparoscopy is not possible, please convert to open surgeries. And at the end of the day, end of the surgery, it will give a, a matrix in a printable format. So what this matrix does is, the matrix are actually what the human uh, eyes or mind they cannot measure. For example, how many injuries were created, how many ML blood loss was there, how many unwanted movements we are done with the instruments, how many times the coagulation energy device touched normal structures, how many times you have gone near the vital structures without with no reason. All these metrics will be given and it will also tell you the pass and fail also. For example, you want to assess a candidate in a surgical skill, you can just give him a scenario here, ask him to perform it okay, and uh, it will tell you how the candidate performs. Let us say you have two candidates, you want to know who is the best in surgery, you can actually ask them to perform the surgery in this simulation. So uh, in Jitmar, we have uh, all these machines, uh, what I was telling. So we have something called a GI bronch mentor, which is called a endoscopy uh, simulator as well as a bronchoscopy simulator. So you can see the machine, there are some holes there. You can put the endoscope there inside and you can see the uh, stomach, colon, pancreas, endoscopic ultrasound and all that. In the bronchoscopy, you can see the bronchus, lungs. You can take the biopsy and when you take biopsy, the lesion will bleed, you can cauterize it. Now all these skills, you do it 20 times here, then next you do it under the uh, mentorship guidance assisting, then you do it uh, yourself with the guidance, then you do independent. These are the four phases of any simulation training. Robotic surgery also, you have a simulator which is called ROSE, this was the first installation in India at our center. So this also is a 3D view, this is uh, similar to Da Vinci robot. So we have uh, workstations for uh, simulators for urology procedures, stone removal, uh, 
trans urethral percutaneous all this uh, we have modules so these are all very costly machines which comes into several crores so you can see the uh, machine here it is easily identifiable what the procedure going on is a uh, angiogram okay so this is a coronary angiogram the dsa simulator so you know that coronary angiogram stenting is very critical so you do it uh, uh, here in a simulator give a patient scenario for example 70 year old male with the anterior descending artery stenosis and this is the patient you are going to uh, put stent in a simulated environment it will give you angiograms so what it does is you can uh, try it because these are time limited procedures you will start counting the time Okay, it will affect your performance in the simulator. It will give you low mass. It will take more time. If you create more complications, it will give uh, less mass to you. Okay, so this is called uh, what we call the uh, cardiac mentor. There is something called a ultrasound uh, simulator. So it's a very ultrasound nowadays. It is very commonly used machine all over. So let us say 15 days, somebody want to learn ultrasound. So you can buy this sort of a simulated machine. So the machine which we have is a abdominal ultrasound as well as a, a transesophageal uh, echo. So you have an echo module, ultrasound module as well as a T transesophageal echo module. So what it does is it gives all the scenarios, the normal scenarios in the abdomen. You can see the uh, right side of the screen. You can see the gray scale. You can see the organ. On the left side. It will also give a corresponding 3D anatomy of the organoid area what you are seeing. Okay. So heart, it will show, lungs, it will show. This is the normal thing. This machine will also give you information about the pathology. You can set, for example, you want to set the scenario as chronic liver disease. So you select chronic liver disease. The, the dummy which you are seeing will be electronically converted to a chronic liver disease patient inside the abdomen. So, when you put the ultrasound probe, it will show the bad liver, fluid inside the abdomen, enlarged spleen, and lot of blood vessels and all. You want to convert into cardiac failure, so you will see dilated ventricles and all. So, there are around 30 to 35 pathological scenarios like tumors and all that, pleural effusion. You can change the module into that way and it's a very effective learning tool what you have to uh, see in the real scenario. So this is called a neuro mentor. We don't have this machine right now. So this neuro mentor is basically, you know that the neurosurgery is a very precise uh, surgery. Even if you change in millimeter, the patient can go for paralysis. You can do craniotomy in a simulated uh, end. This is uh, something called a, a, a trauma simulator. So this is just like a real size uh, human being. You can see that the, the limb is uh, amputated in the war and all that. You can throw this uh, from the top of the building. It will, uh, the uh, dummy will develop a fractures and all. It can be refixed also. You can make it to normal. Okay, so, so here is an amputation scenario and a complex injury on the left uh, uh, shinna tibia, which is replicated here. So these are the real uh, uh, simulated uh, man. So this is called METI. So we have a trauma simulators also. This is what we use in our department, what we call another simulated scenario, which is called the uh, Mirian Intrasense software. Now this is a liver image. You can see the tumor in the liver in the pink. You can see the blood vessels in the red and the three blood vessels in the liver, uh, red and uh, other uh, green and blue. So what it really does is it will give volume calculation it will give the exact uh, radiology images. It will convert to these sort of 3D images. You can actually remove the part of the liver. When you do surgery, you remove the part of the liver. Here also you can be, as I told, computer simulation. You remove the part of the liver in the computer. Then it will show where all it is uh, cutting and intended to cut. And to next day, you can replicate in the operation theater environment. So we started this exercise in a uh, very... Uh, Early in uh, 2015, and now we are seven years, we have progressed much. So, the advantage of this simulation is in the basic as well as advanced training, you can actually uh, give a training to the uh, students. It's not about theory, it's about the practical. So, you have, will have theory classes, uh, very orientation 
sessions. Along with that, we also give practical sessions. These are the simple box simulators in uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery you see. So once they do this in simple box simulators, they can progress to advanced simulators. So you also, uh, it is not about only doctors. You can have a, a simulation in uh, training in nursing. You can have simulation training in engineering and uh, different scenarios. So this is a, so the faculty is extracted generally from a different uh, background. And right side, you can see the uh, curriculum for that, small curriculum books. And you can also see the certification. So this is actually a stru very structured learning exercise where targets of trainings are there and also the certifications also there. So we conducted uh, several such uh, programs, almost 50 plus programs we conducted. So these are some of the uh, theory uh, sessions you do. So uh, th there is no limit for this uh, simulation training. An environment, let us say an operation room environment you select for simulation training, you select the correct uh, equipment required for that and you select the correct faculty. So the person who are teaching there, we have a faculty there on left side and uh, resident on down, sister in charge on right side. So all this, uh, you, they can have faculty in their respective department. So when you see the academic structuring of this, you can, uh, you have uh, fellowships in the uh, Western centers, you can issue the certificate to the university. You can also develop some diploma in uh, simulation technology uh, as well. So that's all from my side uh, regarding the uh, simulation. Uh, thank you very much.